Hello everybody. Welcome to the final episode of my show Fabulous Florals with Aarti. In this episode, I thought I'll do something a little different. Let me take you through the art of uh, sugar flower arrangement and show you how you can use it on your cakes. So let's get started. Before we start off uh, with the art of sugar flower arrangement, uh, let us do a recap of uh, what all we did in the previous uh, episodes. So in the previous episode, uh, the first episode, we uh, did the, the petunias. So over here, you can see the petunias which have been arranged in a, a brass can. And uh, then in the second episode, I um, made the speedwell uh, stalks uh, to give uh, movement uh, to the uh, arrangement where I put the petunias and the speedwell stalk uh, together. Then uh, in the third episode, I wanted to have a foliage which is uh, not uh, the usual kind, uh, something a little different. And uh, I thought uh, that these uh, Swiss cheese vine foliage uh, worked uh, really well. And uh, it also added a different uh, texture uh, to the whole uh, arrangement. And after that, um, I wanted something to give uh, movement and softness to the whole arrangement and I thought that these uh, dried up uh, eucalyptus uh, seeds with the twigs looked really well uh, and uh, made the arrangement really stand out um, when I included them uh, along with uh, the rest of uh, the things that we had made earlier. And of course, uh, after that, uh, in the fifth episode, I showed you how to make uh, the Bougainvillea which uh, added a little color to the whole uh, arrangement and uh, after uh, that I have now to bring everything or uh, all the things that we made earlier together I uh, put it together into this arrangement wherein we have the petunias we have the begonia uh, sorry the Bougainvillea the Swiss cheese uh, vine the the speedwell stalk which gives uh, movement and of course the uh, twigs and uh, the dried up uh, eucalyptus uh, seeds so i think uh, all of this uh, came quite uh, well together in a cohesive arrangement uh, in this uh, whole um, uh, sc screen that you're seeing so this is uh, a little about what all we did in the previous uh, episodes and now let's uh, start off uh, with uh, uh, the art of uh, sugar flower arrangement. Now, whenever you, you uh, decide on making uh, flowers, there are a, a, a list of things that you need to tick off uh, before you actually get into the process of making it. So what are these uh, decisions that you need to make? It is um, about what flowers you're going to make, whether it is lifelike or fantasy, what color scheme you're going to use, how many uh, flowers you're going to make. It all depends up upon the time that you have, the, the uh, client's requirements and uh, how much money you're being uh, paid for it. Also the style that you're going in for, how big is your cake, how many tiers does it have, and uh, then you need to decide how do you want to uh, decorate these tiers and how many flowers you want to include. So these are the various decisions that you need to make when you are uh, even before getting into making the flowers and putting them together. So the first thing, what, what type of flowers do you have to make? Uh, you need to decide whether you want to go in for lifelike flowers or if you prefer fantasy flowers both look uh, equally beautiful on a, a cake. Uh, I lean more towards uh, lifelike flowers. So in these cakes, you see I have ranunculus, I have the moth orchid, I have the passion flower, and then I have roses with gladiolus, lantanas, and uh, tulips. So this is more uh, my uh, style of uh, decorating cakes. Of course, I have also made uh, cakes uh, with the uh, fantasy flowers. 
So if you see here, because I, I wanted this applique effect and I wanted to carry forward the same color scheme on my flowers, I have uh, made uh, these fantasy flowers with the same uh, color scheme going on uh, there. And then I wanted uh, to have the plumes uh, of the peacock made with flowers. So again, here I put some fantasy flowers with uh, the golden uh, stamens inside here. And then in this cake, if you see, I have uh, used ranunculus uh, uh, kind of uh, flowers with uh, gold uh, trimmings on it. So like this, you need to decide uh, whether you want to make lifelike flowers or if you want to have um, you want to have uh, fantasy flowers and uh, like i said both uh, look equally beautiful on the cakes once you've decided that the next decision that you need to make is about what color scheme you're going to follow there are various uh, options you can go in for monochromatic pastels harmonious or contrasting color schemes and uh, it all depends upon uh, what mood you want to set uh, for your uh, cake. Now, uh, usually in uh, if you are going in for uh, uh, lifelike flowers, then um, in the, uh, nature you will find that some flowers uh, come in a particular uh, shade or uh, color and uh, you need to stick to those um, shades and colors. However, there are times when you can take uh, liberties to match them with the color scheme that you have decided for uh, the whole cake. Now suppose say you want to go in for a rose and uh, roses come in a variety of uh, shades. So you can actually uh, go in for a shade that will match with uh, the color scheme that you have decided uh, for your cake. Now. Uh, you can decide to go in for a monochromatic um, uh, color scheme for your cakes as well or uh, for your arrangement. Now here this is an uh, arrangement I made uh, for a collaboration um, which is uh, Love Is and I wanted to use um, only red flowers. So I've used different shades of uh, red because for me red is uh, uh, a color of passion. And so you see, I have dahlias, I have uh, amaryllis, I've used uh, some Chinese hat flowers, roses, I have uh, orchids. Of course, the greens are in uh, their natural uh, shades. Um, the foliage is in the natural shade. Um, however, there are a lot of artists out there who make beautiful, beautiful monochromatic uh, cakes, especially uh, artists like uh, Shannon Bond, who has beautiful uh, totally white uh, cakes which look um, stunning uh, where the cake is also white and the, the flowers and the foliage used are also white. Um, uh, now when you go in for a monochromatic uh, color scheme what uh, to add variations and uh, points of interest what you can do is you can use different sizes of uh, flowers or foliage and uh, you can add uh, different textures. You can uh, uh, bring in variety like that to hold the interest of uh, those who are looking at it. So that is about a monochromatic uh, color scheme. Now you can also go in for harmonious colors. Now what are harmonious colors? Harmonious colors are those which sit next to each other in, um, in, in the color wheel so here if you see the the in this cake i've used the clematis and the blue uh, uh, plumbagos which uh, are uh, harmonious colors and they go really well and also the pink that is there in uh, pink and grays uh, that is there in the cake so all of these come together really well now in this cake i have yellows oranges and uh, maroons which again are harmonious colors you can see that they sit next to each other and they really bring the whole uh, cake uh, together in one uh, harmonious uh, unit uh, now if you do choose to use pastel colors now pastel colors are uh, really very pleasing uh, to the eye um, and the good thing about pastel colors is that uh, because they are so uh, muted uh, you can actually use uh, 
colors that you usually wouldn't uh, put together otherwise because uh, uh, they would clash with each other but since they are muted colors you can uh, put them all together and they still look uh, amazing uh, all together so that is about pastel colors you can now also go in for uh, contrasting or complementary colors those are the colors that sit on the opposite side of uh, each other in the color wheel um, so here if you see I have the yellows and uh, I have the uh, blues uh, around it and it really makes my sunflower stand out now one uh, thing to note uh, when you are using contrasting uh, colors it is best not to use uh, both the colors uh, equally uh, of equal strength because um, uh, it's it's better to have uh, just a pop of uh, uh, some colors like here if you see I have just used uh, I have used pastel colors mostly in my arrangement and uh, to just have a pop I have these tulips which are in uh, uh, violet uh, color so sorry purple color so uh, you uh, you can really bring your arrangement uh, to life uh, and uh, uh, create uh, uh, focal points of interest by uh, adding these uh, pop of colors i think i have uh, again a weakness for contrasting colors most of my arrangements have uh, contrasting colors even here if you see uh, i have quite a bit of reds and maroons going around and the pop is given by this one uh, uh, ivory colored uh, open rose and again over here i have reds and uh, ivory and pink so so you can use contrasting colors to really uh, uh, bring a wow uh, factor to your arrangements here again i have these cosmos in uh, contrasting colors so that is about uh, complementary or comp uh, contrasting colors do not be afraid to ma make a bold statement i do know there are a lot of people who get a little intimidated or scared of using uh, bright colors but um, as you can see they really they really bring your arrangement and your cakes to uh, life and uh, catch the eye so that is about uh, deciding upon the color scheme now there are various ways in which you can arrange your flowers on your cakes or even in a floral arrangement um, that is again a decision that you need to make as to how you're going to arrange it and based on that you will decide how many uh, flowers you need to make or what kind of uh, uh, complementing uh, foliage or berries or other elements that you need for uh, your whole arrangement so if you see here i have the flowers placed on top of the cake here i have it in a cascade fashion whereas here i've used another element of uh, having the birds and the bird cage along with my tulips for this and in this arrangement in this cake uh, I've tried to imitate a flower pot with uh, the vanilla orchids uh, growing on them. So there are various uh, arrangements that you can go in for and uh, that will decide also how many flowers that you want to make. Like I said, again in these flowers, uh, in these um, arrangements and cakes, if you see I have a whole bouquet going around uh, over here and then there is this is um, uh, uh, I've, I've given a, a, a look of a boulder over here with the tulips uh, coming out of uh, the boulder and uh, this is of course a chandelier uh, cake and um, I, I really needed a lot many of uh, flowers for this uh, whole cake so a lot of planning went into 
uh, this uh, cake uh, which was uh, made for the 50th, 50th uh, anniversary of my parents. So you get the idea that uh, depending on how you want to arrange your flowers, you will have to decide on how many flowers you need for that particular arrangement or cake. Now again, in arranging the cake, uh, arranging the flowers, there are uh, various styles that you can choose from. You can uh, go in for a traditional look or you can go in for a contem uh, contemporary look. Now, even in the traditional uh, look, you can decide whether you want to have sprays, bouquets, cascades or spiral arrangements or even use um, floaters in uh, between. So to give you again uh, an understanding here, I've used a bouquet here. I have sprays put together and here I have again a bouquet. So to add softness here, I've used uh, the eucalyptus um, uh, seeds again. So this is uh, more of a traditional um, arrangement of uh, the flowers. Again, here for the caskets, I'd, I have not made a, a cake with a spiral arrangement. Um, one thing to keep in mind when you are going in for uh, a cake which uh, has lot many of uh, flowers on it, then it is very, very important that your cake has a very strong internal support uh, system. Otherwise, the weight of the flour will make your whole cake collapse. So especially like these flowers, if you have a whole uh, cascade or going through your uh, cake and it is a tiered cake, then make sure that you have a very good internal support for it. Here you can see that I have a, a bouquet. Uh, bouquets usually are uh, very uh, thick in the center and they thin out as they go outwards. Again, you see that it is more bulky in the center and then it thins out as it goes outward. So one very important thing to keep in mind is that when you are using these uh, traditional uh, uh, methods of uh, arranging flowers on your cake make sure and especially when you are making use of a lot of uh, flowers and foliage on your cake make sure that your internal uh, structure that you used for the cake is really sound especially if it is a tall cake and a tiered cake right so that is about the traditional uh, method of a uh, style of arranging flowers now contemporary arrangements are uh, much more easier because uh, they are quite minimalistic and uh, you can in fact uh, get away by using only a single statement flower and as a point of interest or maybe one or two clusters of flowers and you're good to go you don't need too many uh, flowers um, for a contemporary style. So here, if you see, I have two clusters of uh, poinsettias, but here I've just used one, one peony and a magnolia over here. So this is more of a contemporary uh, style of uh, um, arranging flowers on your cake. So you can choose which style you want to uh, go in for and based on that you can then again decide how many flowers uh, and uh, what uh, accompaniments you want uh, with it um, another uh, uh, another uh, element that uh, adds a lot of uh, movement and harmony to your arrangement is uh, um, is the twigs and the twines that you uh, use for your arrangement. Now, whenever you want to add some movement or harmony to your um, uh, arrangement, it begins right from the uh, point where you are making your, uh, say your foliage, try and give it a curve or a bend. Or if you are making your uh, petals, rather than have them in the same position, stiff, uh, 
in the formed in the same uh, uniform uh, position give it different different uh, movement and that really is very pleasing to the eye it softens your uh, whole composition if you see over here again i've made use of these eucalyptus uh, twigs and uh, seeds as well as uh, the speedwell stalks to give movement to the whole um, arrangement and it really gives a very soft and smooth look to your uh, composition again here i've used twigs to give a uh, movement to uh, this whole composition so like i said uh, to soften your composition you can add movement by using twigs wires paper strings or tendrils made out of uh, floral tape now when i say harmony how do you bring harmony into your uh, composition so what i have done here is i have picked up the color from the cake from these strips these red strips and decided to make my anemones also in uh, red so that the whole composition comes together as one unit and here again uh, this is a cake that i made for uh, incredible india um, the uh, collaboration i was very keen on making these um, water lilies um, so and i was also very sure that i wanted this ajanta elora uh, painting on my cake now based on these decisions i decided that i'll have a sandstone uh, effect on the bottom most uh, tier so that i could have the same color scheme going on in my water lilies and then the whole thing would come together as one beautiful composition so like this you can bring about harmony into your composition by picking a color that is there in in your cake and then having a repetition of it uh, somewhere again for uh, your whole uh, composition so that is about harmony so pick a color from your cake or embellishment and use the same color for your flowers to bring harmony to your entire composition and to tie the whole composition together now another traditional uh, method uh, used is uh, to use uh, separators now these cakes are really show stoppers and uh, you can have spirals you can have uh, 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 you can have uh, tiered cakes with multiple uh, layers and you can have uh, these separators in between now um, they really the initially when i got into cake making i used to always be fascinated as to how these delicate uh, flowers or these uh, these layers of flowers are supporting all the heavy cakes on top of it and it is then i got to know that it is by using uh, separators in between that you can give an impression of uh, the uh, uh, the tears floating over these delicate uh, flowers of course um, i used more than 100 uh, flowers for this uh, cake so it is um, uh, it is meant for uh, special occasions like i said this was made for my parents uh, 50th uh, uh, anniversary but uh, in the end it was the effort was all worth it because uh, people talked about it for a very very long time so if you are looking for a show stopper cake or a composition that is going to be the talk of the town then this uh, this um style of arranging uh, flowers really really works well so this is about uh, using uh, separators now how do you assemble the flowers on the cake so 
You've decided on whether you want to have lifelike flowers uh, or fantasy flowers. You've decided on the color scheme. You've decided on uh, what style you want to follow, whether you want to have a traditional looking uh, cake or whether you want to go in for a contemporary look. Now, once you've decided on all these uh, factors, getting down to actually arranging those flowers on the cake, there are uh, a few things that you have to keep in mind. Always, always be very, very particular about uh, food safety. Uh, make sure that uh, your the, the wire on your flower does not come in contact with the cake at any point of time. Always use uh, posy picks or straws to have a barrier between the wire and the cake. So you can use uh, straws um, for all your uh, flowers. You can decide to place your flowers and your foliage individually onto your cake and have separate uh, uh, straws for each one of them or you can decide to put them all together into a spray or a bouquet and then put the whole spray or bouquet into a posy pick a big one which will hold it in place now if you are using straws it's always uh, it helps if you have the straw coming a little out of the cake so that it's easier to pull those uh, straws out later when you want to cut uh, the cake um, another uh, uh, useful uh, tip here while arranging flowers is to use pliers to uh, pliers or tweezers to push your uh, your uh, bouquets or your sprays or even your individual flowers into cakes especially this really helps uh, the pliers really help when you have a lot many flowers to arrange uh, together on uh, the cake and you want to get into the uh, crevices or uh, into areas where um, there is a fear of breaking a petal if you push it with your uh, fingers so uh, use tweezers wherever possible to avoid uh, breaking the other flowers and getting into the narrow areas now make sure to cover the area where the wire is showing with the leaves or fillers another good uh, thing to know while arranging uh, flowers on a cake is many a times uh, the wires where they meet the cake are seen now until and unless you are deliberately going in for that look where you want the uh, wires or the stems to show and when i say wires over here i'm talking about the wires being covered by floral tape and not the naked wires uh, showing now that is a big no-no uh, please anytime you have any uh, wire always cover it uh, with floral tape so like i was saying if you are until and unless you are going in for a look where you want the stems of the flower to show always try to hide those uh, wires by using either filler flowers or leaves or something that is there uh, do not leave any wires exposed. Always cover it with non-toxic fl uh, floral tape, right? So like I said, do not ever show naked uh, wire. Now, when you make your flowers and you want to place them on your cake, uh, if your wires are too short and your flower is really heavy, it might so happen that the weight of your flower weighs down on uh, because the wire is short you might find that your flower tears through your cake so always keep a good decent amount of uh, stem on your uh, flower so that you have enough of that uh, uh, stem to poke into your uh, cake this is especially true when you are placing your flowers to the side of uh, the cake so 
Do not make the wire too short or else it will tear the cake or fall off, especially while placing it to the side or at an angle on the cake. Now, how do you begin arranging a f uh, your flowers on a cake? So the way I start off is I always take my focal flower, the main hero flower that I have and place it on the cake and see if I like the positioning of it. It is only after, may, after I am happy with the position of my hero flower, I might decide to take it off and then place the foliage around it or even the other elements. But the first decision, decision that you need to make is where exactly you want your focal flower to be. So once that decision is made, it becomes easy to arrange the other supporting flowers and foliage and berries or even the twigs around it. This holds true even for arrangements as well as um, cakes. So there might be, there are times when I decide on placing my uh, focal flowers on an arrangement, place them there, take them away and then go in with uh, my supporting flowers or foliage and then replace them because I know where exactly I want them to be placed. Also, your focal flower or your uh, hero flower should be a little above the other supporting elements of your arrangement because you want the eye of uh, the person who is looking at the cake to first fall upon your focal or your hero flower. So, Always place it a little above the other supporting elements of your arrangement. And like I said, do not leave any wire exposed so that even if the wire is visible, let it resemble a twig or a stem, right? So like I said, until and unless you are going in for a look where you want your stem to be seen, Try and hide it as much as possible using twigs, using leaves or fillers or any other element that is there to support your whole arrangement. So that is about assembling flowers on the cake. Yes, variety is the spice of life. Whenever you decide to have a floral arrangement on your cake, or even make a floral arrangement. Try and bring in as much variety as possible. If you are using a flower, say, if I am going to choose a dahlia for my arrangement, then I will also have a flower which is very different either in size or color or even shape. I will not have uh, flowers which are very similar to each other because the dahlia has a lot many uh, petals on it. I will go in for a flower which has fewer petals on it. So to support my dahlia, if my dahlia is my hero focal flower, then maybe I'll use an amaryllis or I will use uh, an orchid to support it. So if you actually see over here, I have this, uh, this arrangement uh, won me uh, the gold first place at uh, Cake International in 2018. Um, that was the year that I uh, won um, uh, the sugar flower uh, category in uh, Cake Masters as well. So if you look at this arrangement, I've tried to have different kinds of flowers and different movements and different techniques included in this whole arrangement just to uh, showcase um, uh, the variety of uh, techniques that I could uh, over here. So you see that I have contrasting colors here which uh, uh, these begonias give a real pop to the whole arrangement. I've tried to use these pincushion flowers 
and then again to give a different texture and different uh, uh, variety in and as, as well as a different size i've used these lantanas and then there is this passion flower so what i'm trying to show over here is that there should be a variety in the texture the color the size all of it which really makes your eye move in different directions and to rest at different points of interest so your eye should not stop at one point it must keep moving from one point to other and you must be able to hold the interest of the beholder to capture his interest with the variety that you are providing so yes try and have as much variety in your arrangement to hold the interest of your client or anybody who is looking at your arrangement or cake so i hope uh, i could uh, give you some insights into the art of uh, sugar flower arrangement and i hope you enjoyed uh, this presentation thank you so much